on with the video. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the NATS session about the streams and services from zero to hero. My name is Valdemar Quevedo, working at Cyanidia Communications. And my name is Jaime Pena, and I also work at Cyanidia Communications. And in this talk, we're going to we give a quick intro into what is NATS and some of the things that we can do with NATS. And also give you a fun a demo of a NATS chat application where we're using some of the latest features like web sockets and decentralized authentication and a lot of uh, YAML examples to deploy on a Kubernetes cluster on digital ocean. So what is NATS? NATS is a 10 year old uh, pro uh, project actually. It became a, the first commit was in October uh, 10 years ago. It is a cloud native messaging system originally for Cloud Foundry that has as its, as its traits is that it aims to be very performant, very simple and secure and provide an always available dial tone. Has over 30 client languages implementations. The clients are, uh, the protocol has not changed a lot in, all, uh, in this decade. It has almost stayed the same. Just in this uh, year, there are a couple of new additions actually, but has been very stable uh, protocol. Uh, we say that it is lightweight because it is a single binary that has no extra dependencies. It's a very small Docker image. Uh, it's written in Go. It doesn't take a lot of configuration to just have it uh, running out of the box. And the uh, NATS client only requires to be able to present the credentials and a single URL or um, to which from a NATS server that it can uh, connect to. And after that, we will discover the topology of the whole cluster and I'll be able to do the uh, reconnect or failover to other uh, clusters. And has a very simple uh, API that we're gonna cover in this talk. Has many clients, um, unlike with other projects, most of these are maintained by the official maintainers for NATS. So all of these, uh, nats.go, uh, which is the uh, main implementation for nats, uh, nats.ruby, which was the original one, are all man uh, maintained by the, by the core team. So nats in a nutshell is about streams and services. Uh, what is a stream? We say that a stream is uh, essentially a flow of data, uh, some uh, sequence of events that you either want to replay or consume the last the most uh, up-to-date information. But not only can you do uh, streams with NETS, you can also uh, use services, uh, similar to how you are used to using uh, HTTP endpoints or gRPC endpoints for uh, receiving a messaging request and sending out responses. Um, and you can do that one-to-one -one communication with NETS as well, but thanks to the pops up uh, DNA that from the project, you can also for example, get a request, single request, and expect a multiple responses. So you have multiple communication patterns uh, when using NETS. And you also have load balancing, so you, need, you don't need, uh, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you don't need an extra service mesh to get load balancing for making a, a request responses and distributing work. And when using NETS, uh, you're always interacting with subjects. Uh, subjects are uh, something very simple, like a full or weather subjects where you can express uh, uh, different interests, for example, using wildcards like foo.bar, and you can also make a match on foo.wildcard uh, that will match anything on that, at that level of the subject namespace. Or you also have the greater than wildcard that will tap into the traffic and receive all the events um, that you are allowed to receive because you can also have define the permissions of what streams are you are able to to consume. So uh, those uh, features on that translate into uh, service streams and services. Uh, in terms of the API from the clients, uh, you can say that we're using, uh, whenever you use request and respond, uh, those are, we're talking about services. Those are usually load balanced uh, with using the queue subscriptions, uh, but you can use a queue subscription for either services or streams actually. And whenever we do a regular pops up, uh, publishing and broadcasting a message or uh, having a stream of messages, we're uh, of course talking about streams. Um, 
publish, uh, as I mentioned, you can uh, broadcast messages, in this case, publish on Foo, anyone that is connected to Nets and receiving, uh, subscribe to Foo will receive that message. With request response, uh, internally, all this is all pops up, so we're using uh, unique inboxes to announce that you want to, ex you're expecting a single response on your client inbox, so that's, um, you can get one-to-one -one, uh, communication that way, and you can also do load balancing by using the queue subscriptions by defining, uh, for example, like a worker group. So these uh, set of subscribers are going to be able to load balance uh, the work amongst them. And so those were features that have been since the beginning with Nats uh, V1. In Nats V2, the project took a leap where we're not only talking about uh, being the Nats with a single silo. Now you are, we're considering um, Nats as part of like a much larger, uh, much part of a much larger system of connected devices and also uh, workloads, for example. Now it has a NATS V2, it's a multi-tenant, a multi-region, you can place clusters of clusters or just uh, clusters not, uh, nodes in the edge. And so it is a multi-tenant because each one of the uh, services or streams are, will belong to an account and all of them will have a different subject namespace that will not overlap to each other so that it makes it very flexible to have for example, give different teams their own uh, namespace or account for sending messages and then discuss be among them uh, which services or streams they want to expose to other uh, accounts. So in this case, have the Acme and CNCF, they are exporting and importing services from each other. And from if you subscribe from imports greater than, you can receive all the messages uh, that it is exporting uh, from Acme account. And the same with uh, streams. So the services from, uh, let's say, Acme account can be imported and mounted as an API within your own subject namespace and interact uh, in, the def in, in, in your own local account with the service from another place. So there's uh, many data sharing features, uh, parts of the uh, NAS v2 uh, deployment. So uh, launch. And also uh, very interesting from that is that we have more availability, available uh, network topologies. So now you can have very uh, uh, complex uh, network topologies uh, using NATS uh, gateway connections for creating clusters of clusters. So you have like a hybrid, uh, make a hybrid setup, a multi-region uh, super NATS cluster with different uh, Kubernetes. Uh, let's say in different regions. You can also have uh, and leaf nodes connected to with edge connections to any part of those uh, larger super cluster. And these can have its own uh, uh, of mechanisms that are different from the, the ones that are part of the super cluster and they can be daisy chain. So you can have map uh, better uh, not topology to how it fits your organization. So this has uh, become uh, consolidated into a pattern that we now call the NATS Adaptive Edge Architecture. So we have seen something regularly. Uh, you have a NATS supercluster which has a, uh, that tends to be in the cloud, for example, or in this case, uh, 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 one very cool demo that we saw is that it's using uh, the ground as the main cluster and then um, satellites have a uh, leaf node connections connected to the ground and be able to, uh, through the leaf node connections, exchange messages uh, to each other. Uh, but, but all of them are different uh, Kubernetes clusters, different uh, network domains, but just the NATS connections uh, makes it uh, forwards and routes, makes the routing uh, possible between those different uh, clients. So for the rest of this talk, we're gonna go over how some of the internals of uh, nats.chat application. This is like the third iteration that we have gone through um, uh, this demo. And we're using some of the latest features uh, for nats. Uh, are you familiar with some of the previous uh, talks from nats? Uh, maybe you have seen the uh, uh, CLI uh, UI that you can use to be able to talk to the other users. 
uh, using some of the latest features from Nets to, to do the same, but with WebSockets. So you have a WebSocket, a single page application that is gonna give you a UI for it to be able to send messages. And these are all streams. Uh, each one of these, uh, the users will have its own credentials provision to them on the fly to be able to publish messages on, uh, on one of the general rooms and also have uh, its own DMs. And we're using the uh, unique public key for each one of the users to be able to go get those and send uh, some basic hard uh events for receiving the uh, messages. Uh, we'll also add um, a, a service to be able to get those credentials. In this case, it's gonna be chat.rec.access. So whenever you go to nats.chat, which is gonna be a service that is available at the time of the conference as well, if you wanna try it. So you pass a username to this uh, chat and uh, the, uh, under the hood, what is gonna happen is that it's gonna make a request uh, through the WebSocket connection to NATS and expecting uh, some credentials, unique credentials to, for this uh, cluster that it, are gonna be um, coupled to the, your username. And the way we have done this is by creating two different accounts. So actually all the users are going to be within this KubeCon account, essentially the chat uh, account. So any user that we create is gonna be part of this account. And the, there's another account that is gonna have the logic and the permissions to be able to do the creation from uh, users that belong to this account. I'm gonna show uh, what, is, what, I, what I mean by this. But the API itself is in, under the admin account, being imported for the uh, chat account and be able to make requests uh, through, uh, from account to account via imports. And also we will show how uh, we added an admin uh, UI where you can uh, do some of the dynamic uh, revoking of users. Uh, so let's get into uh, the demo and show how to get this done. There is a, a, a readme at, and within the NatsIO KubeCon uh, 2020 repo that you can follow to be able to have a similar setup as we have, we're showing this. We have, a, in this case, we have a single Kubernetes cluster that is running in DigitalOcean uh, the first step that we need to do is install NSC. So NSC is the tool that you use to be able to create uh, accounts and users in, in Nets. In this case, we have already created a couple of accounts, um, one of the admin and the other, uh, the chat account. Uh, we have a simple installer for NSC here. Uh, there's a it's, a, it's another script to be able to get some uh, initial setup of accounts, uh, have a directory tree under your uh, uh, folder. But we're actually not using those accounts. We have created a chat account and an admin account in this case. You can use NSC to describe the permissions. In this case, we can see that the chat account is able to uh, it is exporting a chat.kubecon online uh, stream that this is more, more mostly for the UI to be, to be able to display which users are connected and uh, for, for to later revoking. So, and Jaime is gonna cover that uh, in a bit. And also have the ex, uh, importing the chat uh, uh, .red access service to be able to create uh, credentials for themselves. And as for the Nats admin, we have uh, basically the reverse, we have the imports and, and have the exports and imports to the other account. And something you can see from this output is that we have uh, something that starts with an A, it's uh, an account. And in this case, we have another uh, signing key, which is used in case you don't want to uh, be coupled to a, on a single pair of keys. You can have uh, multiple signing keys and revoke them as you want to be able, in case one of them get leaked, then you uh, 
revoke that signing key, remove it from the JWT definition, and do the upload to the NAT server, and that way you can uh, purge that uh, signing key. And uh, we using NSC, we can create a, a users. In this case, um, we only have users as part of the admin account because we need a couple of one to be able to make those requests and mostly for the UI to get uh, uh, updates as well. And the very simple credentials that you can use to make uh, requests. So these are credentials that you cannot do almost anything with them. Uh, the only thing you can do is to get credentials. So there's, uh, other than that, they're very uh, use, uh, useless credentials and does not get in the way from the other users. So we do those uh, imports and exports. Um, in the following with the readme, you can uh, how to do it on, on your own. And once we have all that set up, uh, we're gonna create a configuration for the resolver. And in this case, we're gonna be a embedded uh, NATS account uh, server within NATS, uh, within, within NATS. And we're gonna upload this configuration to Kubernetes so that uh, all the NATS servers are, um, can, be able, uh, can act as a decentralized uh, authority of the JWTs. So, now, as for running this on Kubernetes, uh, we maintain uh, Helm charts for deploy. And to be able to have external connectivity, we're first gonna have to set up a domain. In this case, we're using sfo.nats.chat. And I have a single IP mapped currently. So the way this works is by using uh, an external DNS component. The Bitnami maintains a very good uh, chart for uh, doing this, for managing uh, external DNS. And it's very simple to use. You, in case of DigitalOcean, you just point your uh, DNS servers to, towards uh, your D DigitalOcean account and, with your, uh, your, and then deploy it with your API token. And now you can map uh, NAT servers to a public IP. And of course, we have opened the firewall for this. And we are also going to be creating a WebSockets load balancer. Uh, so, one, uh, NAT is, um, so, one of the things with uh, NATS is that the TLS doesn't work with most load balancers unless they are L4 load balancers because of the way that the TLS operate happens. So, but with WebSockets now, that's uh, that's no longer a problem because so web sockets are, you can have a front end, uh, a load balancer, uh, load balancer to the multiple NAT servers, the web socket port, and it should just work because it doesn't follow the same, doesn't have the same protocol issues. So we have uploaded the NATS account. We set up a couple of our NATS Let's Encrypt uh, certificates and do the upload of uh, some of these uh, credentials that we're going to be using to be able to provision the, the clusters. Do the upload of the, we need to do the upload to feed to the NAT server what is the latest state for some of the JWTs. Uh, so I already, to save some time, I already have done some of these. So I can show you uh, how it works. So if I try to do a telnet to sfonats.chat, Right now I should get uh, initial info line to which you can, I can start uh, NATS connections. And if I do the same to the NATS, uh, the WebSocket port, in this case 433, I will get a similar info line, but now it's just for the WebSockets. And it's expecting for me to send the credentials, so it's gonna disconnect me. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna show you the a little bit of the code of the how we are issuing the credentials, which is uh, actually quite straight uh, forward in terms of the NATS API. So we are just exposing an accused subscription to the 
uh, subject to able to get those uh, requests. So let's try that uh, real quick. Uh, let's make some credentials to uh, be able to use the NATS, the chat application. So I'm gonna have a, uh, let's say, 23. I'm gonna create some credentials. And whenever I make a request to, using those bootstrapping credentials, I'm gonna get a new set of credentials that I can then use to able to log into the chat. So now I'm gonna log into the chat, hyphens S, using these new credentials, my creds. So I'm connecting to the system and that's it. So this part of the provisioner is uh, creating the username, generating new user uh, credentials that have just used dynamically to be able to uh, connect to the system and announce the, the revoker later on uh, that you can, that there's a, there's a heartbeat from someone connected. And, uh, but even cooler, uh, it's gonna be that UI that Jaime is going to uh, show in a bit. So this is a uh, Nats chat and are gonna be able to interact with Jaime born from the CLI, but uh, he's going to be doing the same through the uh, WebSocket uh, connection. So, uh, so Wally just showed us the uh, CLI uh, version of Nats chat. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a walkthrough of the uh, what the front end uh, application looks like. Um, so just a quick uh, demo of uh, what the front end looks like. So you, when you hit nats.chat, uh, you'll be taken to this welcome page and you can uh, register a username. And so I'll go ahead and do that. And then you get taken uh, into this place, uh, into this chat room, and you can send messages here. So how did we do this? Well, uh, let's go uh, look at the code now. Uh, so to start off, uh, there's uh, a NATS WebSocket uh, library that you can use uh, in your uh, projects. Uh, Nats Chat is a React app, uh, so that's what I'm using here. Um, the imports, there's just three imports, uh, one used to connect. The string codec is just used to translate between the JavaScript string and a JavaScript uint array. Uh, and then you have the credentials authenticator. So um, what does it look like when someone registers? Uh, so I have this uh, register callback gets uh, invoked when you click the register button. So the first thing we do is uh, use the uh, restricted creds that Wally had mentioned earlier. And these creds can only ask for full creds. So these are uh, bootstrap creds. So, um, and we're connecting to the NAT server, uh, which Wally uh, mentioned before. Um, so once we have the initial uh, bootstrap connection, uh, we're gonna ask a NATS uh, server service, uh, the provisioner that Wally had mentioned earlier, we're gonna say, hey, uh, can I get some creds for this username? Uh, and if that all works, uh, then uh, we get a message back and then the message contains the uh, upgraded or full user creds. I'm also closing the, the previous connection just cause we're done with it and we don't need it anymore. Uh, and finally, uh, once we have our new full user creds, uh, we call connect again, but this time with our real user creds. Uh, and this will authenticate us with the NAT server. So then if we were able to get into this uh, then call, uh, that means we were able to authenticate, the new credentials work, uh, and we, are, we can access the, uh, the real chat room area. Uh, and, um, we're saving the creds, for example, here in local storage, but um, you might be able to store them somewhere else. Uh, also, uh, I'm using the uh, like promise uh, syntax, but the uh, NATS uh, WebSocket library fully supports uh, async and await uh, in case anyone was curious about that. Uh, so that's how we got here to this, to this area. So now when we get to the, uh, this, the chat room, uh, what happens next? Well, the very first thing that happens is uh, the, uh, 
this is like when the page loads, if you're not familiar with uh, React JavaScript, um, basically we connect again. So using the full creds that we got from the welcome page. And then here's where we set up some uh, streams. Uh, Wally had mentioned these earlier as well. Uh, so we have a couple different streams. We have a stream of messages uh, for the KubeCon channel. It's uh, this channel right here. Uh, we, ha we also have the Nats channel and the general channel. Uh, and additionally, we have the online status. So every uh, user, when they log into the app, will send us heartbeats. And that's how we know uh, who's online. As you can see here, Wally QS2 is online. And he sent a message. Yeah, cool. Uh, so, and then finally, the last stream that we set up uh, with the WebSockets is the DMs uh, stream. So this is where we can receive messages. Wally can send messages to my uh, public key. And the public key is taken from the credentials file that the, uh, that the provisioner uh, gave to us. And uh, that's where I can receive streams. The heartbeats, uh, this is uh, our happen here. So it's just a simple uh, publish uh, on an online topic. And then I'm just sending people my info, uh, my public key and stuff like that. Uh, the interesting part, uh, when that Wally's going to show in a bit is uh, how we handle revoking is uh, here. So uh, we're going to be connected um, to the application. And as soon as Wally hits the revoke button, um, this callback will be invoked, um, which will mean uh, that we've been revoked. So uh, when a user is revoked from the system, they receive a notification and the application can handle that. Uh, so in our case, we're just throwing away the creds because they've been revoked and they're no good. And then we get redirected back to the welcome page from before. Um, where Wally does the revoking uh, is also a UI uh, that we've made. And so uh, that's a special path uh, here that is accessible, but uh, you won't be able to revoke anyone unless you have the right credentials. And Wally's going to show that in a bit. Um, but how that works is, I mean, pretty much the same as we've seen so far. Uh, we connect uh, using the credentials. Uh, Wally will show that. And again, we have a uh, stream. We set up a stream uh, to uh, receive updates uh, for provisioned users. So that way the screen gets populated with, you know, the current users that the system knows. Uh, and then we have another math service where we just ask the system, this is when the page loads, uh, we'll ask the system, uh, you know, okay, hey, tell me everyone you know about right now. Uh, and then um, we just save that data. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it uh, for the code. It's not too difficult, it's just, or nothing too complex, it's just connect. And then you can set up your streams or you can do your services. Uh, and uh, that's it. So I think uh, Wally is going to show us how to do uh, revoking next. Uh, so I'll hand it uh, back to him. Thanks, Jaime. So let's see, make host. Cool. So I'm going to show, because I have the credentials, Jaime doesn't have the credentials. Um, I'm going to do the uh, disconnect by going to drag and drop some of the credentials here and I'll get an event of the currently active uh, users. Have, uh, I'm currently connected here on the console and send a message to Jaime, he replies back. I'm gonna, <laughs> then I'm going to, uh, this is gonna have my Jaime first. And also, you know, so I'm going to self-disconnect oh, <laughs> self and, and that's going to give me a user authentication revoked uh, error. And uh, the left side of the screen uh, I'm showing, you can see that what, what is happening essentially is that we're making a request to another uh, subject under the admin account that is able to uh, respond to these uh, actions. And using the system credentials, the provisioning is able to use uh, talk to some of the special APIs for NATS to be able to make a lookup 
of JW, the latest state for the JWT. So we're getting the latest state for the JWT, uh, inspecting the uh, currently the with that JWT and adding padding padding it with the a user a public key that is not going to be longer used. And then I make we're issuing issuing another request to be able to update this JWT and re-encode it using the uh, uh, the special or another set of signing keys. So we make that update because we're using the latest NAT server that now has an embedded NAT uh, account server. Uh, we don't need extra components. Everything is going to happen in the in the NAT node, and it's going to be uh, share the latest state of that uh, JWT. And that's it uh, for the demo. And uh, will be standing by. This is this service is going to be alive uh, during the KubeCon as well. So feel free to try it, and we'll stand by for the Q and A. Uh, thank you.